Welcome back to my YouTube channel and this keeping up is Sage Davis. Yes, Sage Davis. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe now. Yes, subscribe now. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button now. Thank you. Today I'm going to be talking about the best way to understand pharmacology or the best way to study pharmacology. Yes, I know you're having an issue with understanding pharmacology. You said it's hard, it's that, you need to read, you need to remember. Ah, this and that. Don't worry. In this particular video, I'm going to help you or teach you different things, the tips and the tricks about pharmacology. So, let's start. Before we start this video, or the tips rather, I'm really really sorry guys, I love to move my hands, I have this, I don't know what to call it safe, like my hands are always moving up and down and that, I'll try my possible best to reduce it in this particular video, so this is me apologizing beforehand, before you see that like this and that, because I know a lot of you have complained about the hand movement, that she does it, doesn't this, doesn't repeat confidence and every other thing, and every other thing, so this is me apologizing first, so let's go straight to the tips. The best way for you to understand pharmacology, you must brush up your physiology. That's physiology of certain diseases like physiology of hypertension, physiology of arrhythmias, and physiology of action potential. Because in treatment of arrhythmias, there are certain places you block. Like you need to know where a um, sodium enters, where it's leaving all those stuff, cashew, blah, and the rest. You need to know the enter and the rest. Because in arrhythmias, or anti arrhythmias, that's a drug treatment for arrhythmias or drug that's Contract arrhythmias because they are, um, how mistaken, they are classified from class 1 to class 5, where class 5 is unclassified and class 1 is sodium channel, um, sodium channel blocker, class 2 is on, um, class 2 is on um, beta blockers, the lowers and the rest, type the um, class 3 is the potassium channel blockers, then type 4 is the calcium channel blockers. So you need to know all these things. If you know the physiology of arrhythmia, you need to know where each of these classes of drugs will act on for you to understand it better. Number two, you have to know the suffix. Like you know the surface, you're able to oh, identify this drug is of this classification, is of this particular type of drug class. So you need to know, like in LOL, that is low, tells you, okay, this drug could be a beta blocker. Like propanolol, metoprolol, tumolol, atelolol, all the law tells you that ah, this drug could be a beta blocker. Or you have the king, tetrakin, buvivakin, and all those stuff. Tells you, okay, it's local anesthesia. Or you have the prazole. The proton pump inhibitors like the opiprazole, pantoprazole, and the rest, or the pre's like enalapri, captopri, and the rest. The suffix will tell you, oh, this drug is of this class. Like the pre tells you, oh, these are not hypertensive drugs under the ACE inhibitors. Or you have the SATA, uh, losatan, and the rest that tells you, oh, this is a uh, uh, angiotensin two, uh, two blockers. Or the prazo that tells you that this is a proton pump in bito, main prazo, pato prazo, tells you, okay, this, this is how you classify or this is how you know a drug, to identify a particular drug in this class. A tree, mnemonics. Form the habit of forming mnemonics. Like, get your own mnemonics. Like, you can even browse self. Eh? Funny enough, self, eh? you can browse self. Eh? Okay, mnemonics on how to uh, drugs with treatment of ulcer, mnemonics of blah blah. Details will just show you different things. Google will show you different things, and that will even help you. Common things of cocomoly, like, yes, common things of cocomoly, like the common side effect of certain drugs, like cautionary map um, for stereotoxicity, where C stands for cataract, U for ulcers. S for strae, H for hypertension, then for cholinergic toxicity, like um, kosh, kosh, um, no, cholinergic overdose, like dumbbells, where D stands for diarrhea, U stands for urination, B stands for bradycardia, B stands for um, bradyc um, brad um, bradycardia, bronchial constrictions, and the rest. So it helps you remember, it helps you to remember certain things. So you don't even, we don't even need to forget, we only forget. Get sticky notes or flashcard. Make use of sticky notes, make use of flashcard. For sticky notes, I think in my previous video on how to prepare for clinical postings, I mentioned it. Maybe I'll link it 
down there for you guys to watch sticky note helps you to remember it makes you just like just like mnemonics like every day you look at it, it helps you to memorize a particular show you can just write okay what well, making the action of um, broco asthma is it by causing broco dilatation is it by reducing inflammation and all those stuff you need to know you need to have probably write them twist it on the wall every morning you go there i'm looking at it okay what are the, the like now i made a sure side effect of a clinic overdose don't be okay g stands for you 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 finish um, this stands for diarrhea u stands for u stands for urination this stands for diarrhea all those things it helps you like um and all those things so you form the habit of writing important things important drugs that there's no way they won't ask you pud there's no way you finish from funded level class i don't know the job to never prepare to go sir like it's it's a ma it's it's not normal. You need to know the blood uh, the drug treatment for PUT for asthma because definitely you see an asthmatic patient, so you need to know them at your fingertips. You need to know is that you need to know the physiology of the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic, the sympathetic, and its receptors because it will help you understand everything. If you're able to grasp the uh, autonomic nervous system very well the other part in pharmacology is will become easy very very easy for you to maneuver your ways around it because like now it's a protecting nervous system you need to know the receptors alpha one um, alpha and beta receptors alpha one alpha two beta one beta two beta three you need to know how each of these receptors act okay if you have been act on alpha one what will happen to the arteries you need to know where each of these receptors are located okay um, beta, uh, you, need to read, you need to know where each of these receptors are located for beta you can on the heart beta 2 beta 2 is located where um, on the on the lungs beta 1 is located on the road on the heart because you just have one heart but you have two lungs so that's how you remember beta 1 heart beta 2 lungs if you have two lungs you have one heart so you need to know how this how this acts like now, if like I said, if a nephrom should act on a forward to cause vasoconstriction, because they get in the arteries, yes. So you need to know how this drugs or how the receptor works. So you know how to know how to manage all the drugs to use. That's number one. And then for cholinergic, you need to know also know the receptors um, involved. Um, apart from this, you need to know the drug treatment for hypertension because hypertension is very, very important. It's a vital topic in pharmacology. Antihypertensive drugs. You need to know how to classify antihypertensive drugs. Are they the centrally acting hypertension um, antihypertensive drug like the clonidine or alpha metal dopa? Are they going to act on the receptor itself? The one that will act on um, alpha one, alpha two, alpha receptor is, um, like um, um, the free oxybenzamine, fet. Me, you he been. You also want to know um, beta blockers, like I said, you have your propanolol, metoprolol, atenolol. You also want to know the ones that want to act on the renin angiotensis system. You want to know, ah, is it the um, ACE inhibitor, like the angiotensin combating enzymes inhibitor? You want to know your nalabri, captopri, and the rest. You also want to know, you need to know all the classification involved in certain drugs. Number six, no important topics. There is no way nobody will ask you about agenda system or the autonomic nervous system because that is like the foundation of pharmacology. You need to know your period, like and uh, drug treatment of particular You need to know asthma, you need to know hypertension, anti hypertensive drugs. They are really, really important. If you go for viral, they are going to ask you this question. You need to, there are certain things that are very important, so you need to know the ones that are important in your school so you know how. Seven, know the side effect of certain drugs. Like like this, most side effects will be the action of the drug. Like now, if you give an overdose of antihypertensive drugs, what will happen? Hypertension, right? Hypertension. If you give if, if you if you give a drug that normally reduces the um, the heart activity, what will happen? Could cause heart block, like calcium channel blocker. If you give a drug. Um, anti, um, um, anti psychotic drugs, typical, most especially the typical anti psychotic drug. What will happen? It could cause Parkinson's disease because it's going to block the word dopamine receptors. So, all these things like you to use your common sense in um, extrapolating or using certain information. So, I already said that the side effect will be what the action of the drug or whatever tissue is going to act on. So, that understand why certain drugs are classified into different groups like now 
Is it like in a um, um, classification of um, end states? Why are they classified? Are they classified based on the mechanism of action? Or are they classified based on their chemical names? Okay, now if it's based on class uh, classification of their mechanism of action, they're going to beat Cox one or Cox two. You need to know, like in a um, PUG, are they going to act by inhibiting the histamine two receptor? Are they going to act by inhibiting the proton pump inhibitor? All this way, you need to know how these drugs are classified and understand why they are being classified. Is it because they have similar mechanisms of action? Is it because they are originating from the same chemical um, uh, molecule or same chemical formula and all the stuff? All those things. Number nine, making videos. One thing that helped me in 400 levels was that I made use of different videos. Videos have a way of making me remember things fast. Or you can even use it with graphics, you can draw, you can maybe remember photography memory. If you have photography memory, you can make use of that. I made use of um, videos from um, Dr. Naji, Kaplan, USMU, and other random videos on YouTube. You could just browse and say this, 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 or medical school made easy. So all these things really helped me. So you can, if you need these videos, I could just actually link them down in my description box. The textbook, if you need the textbook, I have the soft copy. I could send them to you. You could just make a comment, and I will send use my email as a medium. If you need, um, if you need assistance, or you need me to show more like into certain things mentioned here, I'm available. What am I doing? If I cannot help you. <laughs> Come to the end of this video. I hope you find this video very, very useful. If you haven't liked or subscribed, please subscribe now and like this video. Yes, like this video. Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to fail from oncology because from oncology is very easy and straight to the point. If you understand or if you know what to do and how to go about it. So, this is me saying bye, guys. Bye, guys. See you guys next time. So, bye.